The French grandmother, who has become a feminist hero here in France and around the world, is taking the stand again today. Gisèle Pellicot became a household name after she insisted the rape trial of her ex-husband and 50 other men accused of assaulting her while she was unknowingly drugged and asleep should be held in public. Her ex-husband, Dominique Pellicot, has already admitted his crimes to the court, saying, I am a rapist like the others in this room. We're going to talk more about this now with our Jean-Emile Jamin, who's at uh, the courthouse in Avignon. Jean-Emile, first of all, tell us a bit more about why Giselle Pellicot is taking the stand again today at the halfway point of this trial and what she has said so far. Well, Jeannie, uh, as soon as... Uh Giselle Pellico exited out of the courtroom. It was to huge applause after taking the stand for the second time, just the second time uh, since uh, that uh, trial began on the 2nd of September. And it's the applause which has been a common theme throughout this entire uh, hearing uh, of uh, these uh, 50 men who are accused of raping her at the invitation of her husband, who also took part in those alleged rapes. That's Dominique Pellico, of course. And Giselle now taking this opportunity eight weeks in. We're at the halfway point of uh, these hearings to basically respond to those uh, allegations or accusations uh, from the lawyers of the co-accused, the defendants, uh, saying that maybe she wasn't uh, unconscious as was uh, reported, as was shown uh, allegedly in those photographs which she saw in the court of those uh, alleged rapes taking place, uh, saying that uh, perhaps uh, she was a co-conspirator with uh, Dominique Pellico himself and she was addressing those claims. And we mentioned uh, the statements uh, that she already said in that uh, courtroom. She addressed uh, Dominique directly. She couldn't look him in the eye, though. She said, uh, how could you do this to me? How could you betray me to the extent of the uh, let people in the room? You know my aversion to swinging. Uh, This betrayal is immeasurable. She said, I thought I would end my days with this man. She described him as the perfect man. She said she's a totally destroyed woman. She doesn't know how she's going to rebuild herself. And she said, I've always tried to pull you up towards the light. You chose the depths of the human soul. She was grateful once again to all of those who came out to the court to witness this public trial, uh, a landmark public trial. uh, And uh, she wanted to just basically have her say once again a reflection at this halfway mark it even touched on the ways that she was uh, allegedly drugged uh, saying that mr pellico himself had prepared elaborate meals uh, using these uh, anti uh, anxiety pills uh, such as temesta in her food it covered a range a spectrum but finally uh, giselle pellico has her say And Jean-Emile, as you were mentioning, there has been a lot of support there in Avignon. Tell us a bit more about what the feeling is like outside the courtroom where women have been showing up almost since the beginning of this trial in September. Well, this has struck a real chord with the, throughout the French fabric of society. Uh, it's not just talking about a, a Me Too movement amongst women in high positions where uh, possibly celebrities are involved, which has been the case in a lot of high-profile cases throughout France of late. This time, we are dealing very much on the ground. It is called the Mazon rape trial. This happened in Mazon, a small town of about 6,000 inhabitants uh, just northeast of Avignon, where we are. And it is concerning men which would traditionally be seen as just normal men, men who are involved in everyday life, in every society, uh, firemen, policemen, journalists, uh, former prison guards, uh, technicians, they've all come forward. These are amongst the 50 men which have been giving their testimonies, another six this week, uh, which involve that wide spectrum. And so we're just talking about the fact that this could be any man in society, in your close spaces, in your domestic spaces. And uh, so it really is a next chapter of the Me Too movement. And we've seen that throughout France of late, over the last two months, uh, this kind of uh, support which has been taking place outside the courthouses. Uh, We've even seen a mural being drawn of Giselle Pellico, who has become this bastion of strength for feminist movements uh, that was uh, drawn uh, up on a wall in Lille. So... Giselle taking this fight to a new stage and uh, now the women also finding their voice as a result of this trial. It was what Giselle Pellico said or she wanted when she made her closing remarks that her case could let others speak out as well. We will see how that transpires from here until the end of the case on the 20th of December. 
Jean Emil, thank you for that. That's our Jean Emil Jamim there reporting from the courthouse in Avignon, where that trial is uh, underway. I'm